my name is Warwick Miller Bolton Jabangari from Aligran. I'm a artist as well at Aligran Alpara Art Center. And I came here to look for stone knives. We want to make a stone knives. How old people used to dig around this area making stone knives and stone necks as well. I'm so happy to see this place as well. And I'm here, I want to make artifacts with the stone knives to keep the knowledge alive, keep the knowledge strong for our next generation. Graham Beasley is the guardian of this area of this land. I thank Graham Beasley and Mr. Taggy and Mr. Corbett as well. That's been me here, showing me this area. So I'm just quite grateful to be here as well to visit this country. At the moment, we are at Warapunya country, my grandfather's country. This land belongs to my grandfather. Where we come here, they used to trade axe knives and stone knives here. This is my grandfather's land. My full name is Graham Beasley Chubrula. This is my mother's land, my mother's Carol Beasley. It's my grandfather's land, Old Tikrali Chapananka. It's Warabinja land. And I'm the great, great grandson of his. The land is very important because, you know, I'm a caretaker now that I can look after it as well. I'm John Dagi and I'm here at uh, Warabinja country. Tim old fella, Murphy and Riley's used to live out here and they been showing me all the stone knife and quarry where they used to dig stone knife, how to make stone knife. Hello, my name is Peter Corbett. In the old days, our uh, forefathers would make them stone knife, make it for ceremony or maybe for cutting up a kangaroo or an emu, share it around with the family that they cook the meat. They were used for hunting as well, kangaroo, stone knives and they used to make spear with this and stone knives and even stone necks. Hunting kangaroos, emus and turkeys. We find them and then we make them. How old people used to do it in the early days. The one I got in my hand, we're gonna use this with a stone now to make a stone knot out of the rock himself. That's how we're gonna tap it like that, hit it like that, to make a good shape of stone knives or a handle for a spear, spear thrown, to make a spear out of it as well. So the feedback works. Normally we use them for stone knives. When we're making the stone knives, at the end, end of the handle, that we all that we make the handle. So the feeling of grass, when they grow together in one area, that's what we are looking for. So we take them up with a shovel, and then we have to get them up. Then we have to look under it, if this one got more wet under the roots. The one we use to put them on, we use the canvases, and we're gonna, we're gonna get a stick to wax the finifex wax, to get the wax out of the finifex. So we have to do that a couple of times to wax the finifex grass, to get the wax out, so we have to do it again, over and over again. That's how people used to do it in the early days. From there, we have to separate the grass out of the wax. That's the wax called yakula that we're going to mix that up with the Philipex wax that we're going to use. So this yakula come from the thermarils and we're going to use them as well. Mix them up with the Philipex wax. Normally we melt them with a fire stick or on the fire as well and then we mix them together. So we'll keep the wax, after only separate the crust from the wax. So I have to put them in a hot heat to make them soft. When they're hot and soft, that's how the wax is gonna come on the stone, stone knives. That's how it's gonna become, how we do it. So when they're hot, you have to do it straight away and do it with your arm, rub it around the stone. then it'll become a handle that you can hold it like that. You can see that now they done it, it's strong now. It won't come out, so it's hard enough to use it. So that's how they're gonna use this. 
with a kangaroo meat, to cut a kangaroo or emu. This one is called Wiriji, air belts. This is how our old people used to make them on the early days. You just do it like that. Then it comes around like that. And when they made them, they used to wrap it around the arm and the waist. That's where they used to keep the stone knives on the arm and around the waist as well. Keep, keep the boomerang on the side as well. That's what was used in the early days, even though for the ceremony as well, they used to use the air belts. And we're still making them these days. We want to keep that culture for next generation to come as well. We get airs from people when they have their haircuts or in ceremonies as well, when someone's passed away. They have to cut the hair, then from there we take the hair to make some apples. Sometimes we use them in the ceremonies as well. This is my first time here. Yeah. I, I thank Peter, Mr. Dougie and Graham bringing me and showing me the place that our people used to live around this area in early days. It's very important to me to learn more from the old fellas. So it's a present to me that Come to see the land. So I'm getting more different ideas from my elders. More ideas. They don't keep their knowledge for the next generation to come. Some people age like me don't know much about artifacts or doing some paintings. So we need more young people like me to learn more. Making artifacts while we got this all fellas around us that want to teach us more and we want to keep that knowledge for the next generation. That's why I want to continue making artifacts, keep the knowledge alive. I'm going to tell you about the painting that I did of my great-great-grandfather. It's all about rain dreaming. Mapa. I've been teaching by all Job Bird Changala and A.B. Changala. I've seen all of these paintings were done by A.B. Changala in the past, since when I was young. Also, I used these designs on the ceremonies as well and decorating the body with the designs of the rain ribbon. Before, well, people used to do it on the ground. A.B. Changala used to do it on the ground in those days when he was doing those rain dreaming paintings. A.B. Jana was the rainmaker and all of the rain dreaming. Alongside with his brother was Joe Bert Jana. So Joe did me a lot with A.B. teaching him. I seen all Joe Bert Jana. He made it rain a few times in the place of the rain dreaming. Same time when he was singing rain, he made rain come, made rain fall, and made the rainbow seven get up from the water hole. So he was a rainmaker and a rainbow seven all by himself. If it's rain in those areas, you see the water on the land, the rain trimming himself on the water hole. Up up, you can see the clouds when it's raining. You can see the reflection on the water. So. The dreaming that I did in front of me is all about the rain and the rainbow man. The rainbow man himself was A.B. Jangala and the rainmaker himself as well. I think all A.B. Jangala and Joe Jangala teaching me a lot about the rain dreaming and I'm the guardian of the rain dreaming myself. I'm here to look after it, protect it, to keep the knowledge, to show it to my kids as they were teaching me and keep on feeding them just like a breastfeeding. Keep on feeding, teaching our young ones to keep that knowledge to the next generation to come. I'm so proud of my great-great-grandfathers when they're teaching me and my grandmother as well getting behind me, teaching me, showing me all these rain dreamings of his fathers. I won't stop painting, I want to continue painting to do this rain dreaming. What I've been told by Tobe, Tona, and my grandmother, and family back home at Lajamalo. And I want me to continue to do this painting about this rain dreaming.